This is the prince of Pan-Africanism. The prince of black psychology. The prince of black consciousness. The prince of political science. The prince of black education. The prince of Pan-Africanism. Brothers and sisters, I'm joining you today. The day after, two days after, the 53rd anniversary or memorial of the assassination of the great and incomparable Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr who was assassinated 53 years ago, the day before yesterday, April the 4th, 1968. 53 years ago, we lost one of the greatest black organizers and leaders of all time. Political ideology notwithstanding, Dr. King, was one of the goats. So now, here we are, 53 years later, having not had a serious movement since, accepting the Black Panther Party, and having sat on our backsides and allowed the white power structure to have its way without men, women, and children. I told you all back in 2008, 2009, that the presidency of Barack Hussein Obama, the presidency of Barack Hussein Obama would go down in history as one of the greatest bait and switches in American African history. I repeat, black America's support and blind endorsement of the presidency of Barack Hussein Obama will go down in history as one of the greatest bait and switch tactics that human history has ever recorded. Those eight years that we sat by and worshiped a man, those eight years that we sat by and let the Democratic Party ignore black people for one man, so that one man could enjoy his presidency, those eight years, while we act like we received something those eight years while we had our psychological Novocaine, this country's power structure reorganized itself, re-empowered itself, and rededicated itself to the destruction of black people. Here, there, and everywhere. We should have never taken time off. And although you try to make Donald Trump the scapegoat, although you try to make Donald Trump the scapegoat, although you try to make Donald Trump the scapegoat, no, no, no. The momentum for Donald Trump's racism, the momentum that carried Donald Trump into office. The momentum that allowed Donald Trump to ignore black people was initiated with Barack Hussein Obama. See, you can fool some of the people some of the time. You be able to fool all the people some of the time. You be able to fool some of the people all of the time, but you'll never be able to fool all of the people, all of the time. How can it be possible 
that Barack Hussein Obama is not responsible for police genocide, but Donald Trump is. How is it possible that Barack Hussein Obama isn't responsible for mass incarceration, but Donald Trump is? So the question the American Negro has to ask himself right now, the question that the American Negro has to ask himself right now, Donald Trump is not in office anymore. Donald Trump hasn't been in office for almost three months. So if Donald Trump was your problem, if Donald Trump was the reason our children were being miseducated and our people being murdered due to COVID, if Donald Trump was the reason for our people being ethnically cleansed out of their own neighborhoods, if Donald Trump was the reason for why we don't have reparations or access to wealth, if Donald Trump was the reason for that, who is to blame now because he's no longer in office? Who is to blame now because Trump is no longer in office? I will ask again. If Donald Trump was your problem, if he was the epicenter of your problem, now that he is gone, who then do you blame now for the black predicament in America? The point that I'm getting at, the point that I'm getting at, brothers and sisters, is we have to stop treating individuals as saviors or devils. You should never look to one person, particularly a political figure, a politician, an elected so-called representative of the people. You should never see a sole person as being your savior and you should never see a sole person as being your problem. Racism, as I've been teaching you for more than 20 years now, racism is a system. It is a system. Individuals do not defeat systems. Do you understand? Nor do individuals control systems. I want to be very clear about this. By making Obama an angel and Donald Trump a devil, we failed on both sides. By making Barack Obama an angel and Donald Trump a devil, we failed on both sides because we keep on reducing systemic issues to individual personalities. We keep on reducing systemic issues to individual personalities. It's just like racism. And America loves the fact that black people, America loves the fact that black people have conceptualized racism as a personality deficiency. That's how most Negroes approach racism. And the reason we approach racism from the perception of a personality deficiency, it is an individual personality deficiency. So if you see racism as an individual personality deficiency, you'll never solve it because you'll never come around to understanding the group nature of racism. It's no different than the political structure in America. If Obama is a savior, you don't understand racism. If Donald Trump is the devil, you don't understand racism. What is happening to you was happening before Obama and is happening after Trump. What is happening to us happened before Obama and it is happening after Trump. You know why? Because the personalities have very little to do with it. When you become a president or a governor or a mayor in the United States of America, when you become a president or a governor or a mayor in the United States of America, you are given a script. 
You are given a script that you follow. You're given a script. And you will follow that script. Because if you don't follow that script, you will end up like Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. And as bad as you thought Donald Trump was, he did not deviate from that script too much because he would have never survived his first term in office. And I would also argue, because he didn't stick to the script as well as he should have, he didn't get a second term in office. Again, Donald Trump did not violate the script too much because he wouldn't be on the planet breathing right now if he violated the script too much. But at the same time, he didn't stick to it as closely as they would have wanted, so he had to go. Donald Trump would not push the LBGTQ. He had to go. He would not push the COVID. He had to go. Those are two reasons he didn't get a second term. America is trying to get rid of black people. How in the hell are we going to get rid of black people if you're not going to teach the children in public school that you don't have to be what you were born? Donald Trump wouldn't do that. How are we going to get rid of black people if we don't get them to buy into the notion that the COVID and it's that the COVID was some sort of natural virus and that the vaccination would save them. So Trump had to go. But the point I'm trying to make, <clears throat> stop reducing systemic problems to individual personal deficiencies. It's a system. And the reason black people have trouble understanding systems is because we don't have any. The reason black people have trouble understanding systems is because we don't have any. The reason black people have so much trouble understanding systems is because we don't have any. I want you to understand this. We are not organized at all. We are not organized at all. And whenever we do get organized, it's along a religious continuum. Or it is along a colorblind, multicultural continuum. I was reading a position paper from the White House the other day. I want you to read this. The White House put out a brand new position paper on violence against Asians and Pacific Islanders. And in this position paper that the White House put out on violence against Asians and Pacific Islanders, there was no mention of violence against black people. Now, let me be clear. I have no problem with the government protecting the lives and safety of Asians and Pacific Islanders. I have no problem with human life being protected regardless of the color or culture. I have no problem with that. Nothing wrong with the position paper protecting Asian lives and Pacific Islander lives. And by the way, most of those Pacific Islanders of African origin anyway. But with that being said, my concern with the position paper, my concern with the position paper that came out of the White House the other day concerning violence against Asians and Pacific Islanders, there was no mention of violence against black people. How can you put out? How can you put out a memorandum? from the executive branch of the U.S. government talk about violence against people in America and you do not mention black folks. Why am I mentioning this? The reason this is relevant 
is because whenever there's a position paper put out on black folks, whenever there's an article, a discussion, an investigation, a narrative on violence against black people, it's never just about us. I'm making a point here. I want you to understand, overstand, and understand. I'm making a point here. I want you to understand, understand, and overstand what I'm saying to you. Why is it that when Asians are the victims of violence, they can be the exclusive focus of the conversation? When Pacific Islanders are the victims of violence, they can be the exclusive focus of the conversation. But when black people are the victims of non-black violence, when we are the victims of violence, we can never be the exclusive focus of the conversation. They have to talk about violence against whites. They have to talk about violence against Latinos. They have to talk about violence against minorities. They have to talk about violence against transgenders. I'm bringing this up because many of you drunk the Kool-Aid that said this is America. And in America, they can't single people out for attention. Use a damn lie. Use a damn lie. America has been singling people out for special attention ever since America been America. The only people who don't get singled out for special attention are Negroes. I hope you're paying attention to all the attention that the Asians are getting. I, I hope you're paying attention to how the U.S. government is going out of its way to cater to the Asian community, out of its way to cater to the Pacific Islander community, out of its way to cater to the transgendered community. Nobody's going out of their way to cater to you. And you know what makes it so sad? What makes it so sad is President Biden and Vice President Harris have been in office for three months. They've been in office for three months and have yet to deal with the single item issue affecting the American Negro. 90 days and not a single item of relevance to black folks. But three months ago, excuse me, Five months ago, November, you Negroes was out in the streets making black people feel bad about themselves if they did not vote. You used fear-mongering tactics to force the Negro to the election booth. You used fear-mongering tactics to force the Negro to the election booth. And so I ask all my American Negro brothers and sisters, what did you get with your vote? I must ask the question. I must ask the question. I know what your answer is. You know what your answer is? Your answer is, he just got in office. It's only been three months. Be patient. Give him some time. And he will address black issues. That's your answer. But that's the same thing you said about Hussein Obama. That is the same thing you said about President Hussein. You said, give him time. His first four years, he cannot worry about Negroes. He has to take care of other people. But his second term, he will take care of Negroes. So when the second term came, he didn't do anything for Negroes. And so you said, wait till the final year. Barack Obama's final year, you're going to see him do all kind of stuff for black folks. It never happened. And so here we go again with old crazy Joe. Here we go again with old crazy Joe. And once again, the same distraction is being played out by the Congressional Black Caucus. Democratic gatekeepers in the ghetto. And you Democratic gatekeepers in the ghetto are some of the most politically uneducated Negroes i met in my life. I mean no disrespect. But please, Congressional Black Caucus, Democratic Party, can you please give your Democratic ghetto gatekeepers a political education? 
because it is embarrassing the way you send people out here rallying black people to vote who don't even know the history of America, don't know the Constitution, don't know the Bill of Rights, don't know how the presidents are selected. They know almost nothing. Don't know the laws and acts that black people have gotten through the years. They don't know anything. I have yet to have a decent conversation with a Democratic Party ghetto gatekeeper. The Negroes who go out and use fear to force black people to vote, most of them do not understand political science in the United States. Please educate them. Please educate them. See, I'm tired of us allowing people to use emotions to control our political behavior. I'm tired of us allowing people to use emotions to influence our political behavior. What do you mean, Dr. Umar? This is what I mean. When you want black people to vote, you use fear. When you want black people to vote, you use hate. But nobody else is being motivated to vote by fear and hate. Black people are motivated to vote by fear. If you don't get Donald Trump out, you're going to lose something. What am I going to lose? I don't know, but you're going to lose something. Well, Donald Trump is a racist. He hates black people. Blah, 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 blah. So does Joe Biden. So does Bill Clinton. So does Barack Obama. They all hate black people. So what makes Donald Trump so special? Stop letting people use emotions to influence your behavior. They don't use emotions with nobody else. You know what they use? Concessions. You want black people to vote? Use emotions. You want white people to vote? Use concessions. You want black people to vote? Use emotions. You want Europeans to vote? Use concessions. You want black people to vote? Use emotions. You want Latinos to vote? Use concessions. You want black people to vote? Use emotions. You want Mexicans to vote? Use concessions. You want black people to vote? Use emotions. You want Asians to vote? You use concessions. You want black people to vote? Use emotions. You want LBGT to vote? You use concessions. When are we going to wake up? We're the only people who are led around on a political leash based on emotions. They get you riled up. And by getting you riled up, they can get you to do anything they want you to do. Nobody else comes to political decisions that way except the American Negro. Everyone else is motivated to vote by a concession. Donald Trump told the Hispanics, vote for me, you get the Hispanic Prosperity Bill. They voted for him, they got the Hispanic Prosperity Bill. Joe Biden told the transgenders, if you vote for me, I will stretch out the 1964 Civil Rights Bill. I will endorse the Equality Act. LBGTs voted for, for Joe Biden, and that's what they got. Barack Obama told the homosexuals, if you vote for me, I will repeal, don't ask, don't tell. The homosexuals voted for Barack Obama, they repealed, don't ask, don't tell. Biden and, and, and Obama said, Latinos and Mexicans, if you vote for me, we will relax the immigration rules and we will try to let a lot of the illegal immigrants stay here and become citizens. And what is Joe Biden doing? He's promising 11 million undocumented immigrants American citizenship. Joe Biden is about to make history and he's going to make history right on the Negro head. He's going to make history right on your head. He's promising 11 million undocumented immigrants work visas in American citizenship. Work visas in American Let me ask you a question. If Joe Biden can promise 11 million undocumented illegal immigrants a work visa and a pathway to citizenship, where are those 11 million jobs going to come from? I'm going to ask the question again. Where are the 11 million jobs going to come from for the immigrants that Joe Biden is going to make American citizens? Somebody give me an answer, please. Somebody give me an answer, please. If Joe Biden is promising 11 million undocumented immigrants citizenship and work visa, let's start with the work visa. Let's start with the work visa. If 11 million undocumented immigrants are going to get a work visa, where are those jobs going to come from? Because the economy is on life support. COVID has the economy on life support. That's why they're sending you $1,400 this week. 
COVID has the economy on life support. That's why they're sending you $1,400 this week. So if COVID has the economy on life support, where is Joe going to get 11 million jobs for the undocumented immigrants? You want to know where he's going to get them from? Guess where the jobs are going to come from? Guess where the jobs are going to come from? The jobs are going to come from the black community. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The job you were going to get after you got out of prison, forget about that, is going to an undocumented immigrant. The job your child was going to get after college, forget about that, is going to an undocumented immigrant. Your job, you're probably going to get laid off. It's going to go to an undocumented immigrant. You know what they're going to do? You are about to experience in your lifetime. You are about to experience in your lifetime one of the greatest replacement, racial removal and replacement initiatives that have ever been implemented by a modern government in your life because this is going to happen before he's out of his first term. I don't even think he's going to need a second term for this. You're about to witness 11 million black people get laid off, prevented from a job, prevented from a business loan, prevented from job training. You're about to see this in your life. They're going to move you over and let the immigrants take your place. Oh, yes. All those college programs, the job training, y'all hear me talk about how we need to bring the trades back for our sons and daughters so they can become plumbers and electricians and welders and carpenters and roofers and auto mechanics. Well, guess what? They can forget about that. It'll still be room for a few, but they can forget about that because guess what's about to happen? All those job training programs, guess who about the flood all the job training programs. Guess who is about to flood all the job training programs? Guess who about to flood them out? Courtesy of your Democratic vote. Guess who's about to flood them out? Courtesy of your Democratic presidential vote. The illegal immigrants are about to flood out all the job training programs. They're going to flood out all the welfare programs. Oh, yes. If you're not already on public assistance, you won't be getting on public assistance. I'm going to say it again. If you are not already on public assistance, you won't be getting public assistance. Let me say it again. If you are not already on public assistance, you will not be getting public assistance. All of that is going to the undocumented immigrants. All the job training undocumented immigrants. Oh, yes. GED programs, undocumented immigrants. And most of all, and most importantly, and most of all, and most importantly, low skill, low wage jobs. They are about to monopolize them. Low skill, low wage jobs. They're about Walmart. It's over. McDonald's it's over. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is the beginning of the end. They are going to make the American Negro a permanent underclass on a Democratic watch. Obama and Joe Biden is the greatest tag team championship I ever seen in my life. Barack Hussein Obama and Joe Biden are the greatest tag team championship ever. They better than Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. They better than Hawk and Animal with the Road Warriors. They better than Junkyard Dog and Tito Santana. They better than the British Bulldogs. They are the greatest tag team of all time. Barack Hussein and Joe Biden. Those two. And then if you add Bill Clinton, oh my God. Oh, my God. Let's throw Hillbilly Bill up in there. Let's throw Wild Bill up in there. So you got a three-man tag.
tag team championship. Wild Bill Clinton. Insane Obama and Crazy Joe. Wild Bill Clinton. Insane Obama and Crazy Joe. Three man tag team. These three Democratic presidents. Don't talk to me about the Republicans because we already know what they are about. We already know what George Bush Sr. Jr. and Trump is about. We already know because they were honest. They were honest with the Negro. George Bush Sr., former CIA director, he never lied to you or promised you nothing. George Bush Jr., you saw what he did when Hurricane Katrina hit. When Hurricane Katrina hit, that devil act like Hurricane Katrina was a, a, a water leak. He treated Hurricane Katrina like a balloon that exploded, like a sink that had a leak in it. He showed no reaction or response whatsoever. Him and that damn Condoleezza Rice. Condoleezza Rice. You saw how they treated our brothers and sisters down in New Orleans and Mississippi and Alabama with that Hurricane Katrina. And you saw how he let the white folks steal all the FEMA money. Came in and robbed our people blind out of their FEMA money. You saw that. You saw that. You saw what they did. You saw exactly what they did. Shreveport, Louisiana, May 1st. Shreveport, Louisiana, May 1st. The prince is coming for the first time. You saw what they did. Now I want you to compare the presidential reaction to the Asian violence in Atlanta to Hurricane Katrina. I want you to compare the presidential response to Hurricane Katrina to the presidential response to the Asian violence in Atlanta. Mind you, my heart goes out to those Asian families. Nobody should lose their loved ones. I don't have to lose my humanity to be race first. I don't have to lose my humanity to be a revolutionary Pan-Africanist. Loss of life is loss of life. Unjustified murder is unjustified murder. I don't care who does it. I don't care who the victim is. But wait a minute now. As a result of an Atlanta murder of eight the president and vice president paid a personal visit. The president and vice president paid a personal visit to the community. There was no personal visit with Hurricane Katrina. Thousands dead. Definitely hundreds dead. No personal visit whatsoever. No personal visit. But look at what they just did for the other people. See? And then we've been trained by the Democratic Party ghetto gatekeepers to protect the Democratic Party from black people's criticism. If you want to take George Bush Sr., George Bush Jr., and Donald Trump and the three-man tag team. Let's look at this. We're going to look at the three-man tag team match. We got a three-man tag team match. We got Bush Sr., Bush Jr., and Donald Trump taking on Wild Bill Clinton, Insane Obama, and Old Joe. Let's look at this now. Three-man Royal Rumble, six-man tag team match. Six men, three and three. It's the WWF Royal Rumble. Let's look at this now. Let's look at this. And they're going to wrestle and struggle over the grand championship of the Negro vote. The heavyweight championship is the Negro vote. So there's a three on three tag team at six man tag WWF SummerSlam Royal Rumble WrestleMania for the heavyweight championship, which is the black vote. Let's see who actually screwed black people more. Let's see who actually screwed black people more. Let's see. So, you got Daddy Bush. He sent record numbers of black men to go die in Desert Storm. 
Seven, over 70% of the frontline ground troops were black men, and black men are less than 10% of the population. So how in the hell are we 70% of the frontline ground troops? Disposable life. Disposable life. Disposable life. He also had a hand in the CIA crack invasion of the black community because he was the CIA director right around that time. So Daddy Bush had a hand in the chemical warfare against the black community and he had a hand in the disproportionality loss of life of black troops in Desert Storm. So that's Daddy Bush. And then we go to the sun. Turned his back on our Hurricane Katrina victims. Let the white folks rob all the FEMA money. Okay. Now let's go to Donald Trump. Sign Hispanic Prosperity Bill. Re-energize racist white America. Poor white racists. Re-energize them more than we've ever seen before. So that's what the Republican team got. Now let's look at the Democratic team. And I want you to tell me who crushed us worse. Who crushed us were Bill Clinton, three strikes in you out. Bill Clinton, mandatory minimum sentencing for nonviolent drug offenses. First time in American history. Exploded the prison rate. Exploded the prison rate. And then he had the welfare to work program. Bill Clinton had the welfare to work. Kicked all those single mothers off welfare and told them to go get a job so he could appease his conservative Democratic base. Kicked millions of black women off welfare, told them to go get a job that didn't exist in order to appease his conservative racist Democratic base. Right? Then he criminalized child support. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Criminalized child support. You will now go to jail if you can't pay it. Fail to pay. Boom, 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 boom. Bill Clinton. Now, let's look at Barack Obama. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. LBGT, black children. Transgendered the public schools. Ignored black people totally. Took everything we fought for and gave it to every other minority group but us. Put Asada Shakur at the top of the most wanted list. First time a woman was that high. Raised the bounty to $2 billion. Took money from HBCUs and gave them to white colleges. Did nothing about police genocide. But signed the, bru the blue law that said if you fight back against the police, you go to jail for the rest of your life. Killed Gaddafi. Put AFRICOM on the continent. This is Obama. This is your savior. This is what your savior did. And then you look at Joe. And Joe only been in office for 90 days. He's already reinvigorated the transgender movement, the LBGT movement, looking out for the Asians. And he's about to lay off millions of black people so 11 million undocumented immigrants could get a work visa and a job. He is about to undergo the greatest social transformation in black America ever. So let me ask you a question. Who hurt us more, brothers and sisters? Neither one was on our side. Both sides are enemies. But in this three-man tag team, three over here, the Democrats, three over here, the Republicans, Royal Rumble. This is the Royal Rumble for the black vote. Can I ask y'all an honest question? Can I ask y'all an honest question? Which three hurt us more? Put the Democrats on the spot. I'm putting all Negro Crats on the spot. I'm, I'm putting all Negro Crats on the spot because you can't deny the truth. Can't none of you registered Democrats who are Negroes deny the truth? Who hurt us more? Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden or Bush, Bush, and Trump? I'm going to ask you the question again. Who hurt black America more in the 21st century? Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, or Bush, Bush, Trump? We all know the answer, don't we? We all know the answer, don't we? We all know the answer. The Democrats, the last three Democratic presidents destroyed black America more than the last three Republicans. You could take it or leave it. You could take it or leave it. If I'm lying, I'm dying. The Democrats, the last three Democratic presidents 
hurt black America more than the last three Republicans. And can't nobody prove that wrong. Can't nobody prove that wrong. So then you say, well, Dr. Umar, what do you want us to do? You want us to vote for the Republicans? No, I want you to register as an independent. Or even if you don't change your registration, you can stay registered for what you want. You want to stay registered as a Democrat so you can do the primaries? Go ahead. You want to stay registered as a Democrat so you can do the primaries? Go ahead. But when you vote, you must vote and think like an independent. The black, black America should be its own party. Not to run candidates for office unless we are the numerical majority in that particular jurisdiction. If we are the numerical majority in a certain jurisdiction, yes, I have no problem with a black person running and winning and serving an office over black people where we are the numerical majority. 